Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Callan back again, and we are going to teach you how to build a custom audience in Facebook. This is the one of the most powerful ways to start running ads is by using a custom audience. Now, the process is really simple. If you log into your Facebook business manager and go to the audience section, um, well, let's just share the screen. Boom, here we go. Um, you can find the audience audiences section under um, under the menu icon in audiences It'll bring you to a screen that looks like this although you probably won't have any data filled in if you, you're watching this tutorial click click on create audience custom audience and then we're going to figure out how we want to upload this audience there's a few different ways to go about it if you've got a Facebook page with a large following you can pull your audience from the page if you've got a video that has a large amount of engagement, we can um, create an audience from a lot of people that have watched it. Lead forms, website, if you have the pixel installed. Um, otherwise, good old fashioned customer list is what we're in for today. I'm going to show you how to do this. This is pretty easy. You need at least one primary identifier. So that's going to be something like an email address, phone number. You're probably not going to have the mobile advertiser ID, um, but you should also have probably the first name, last name. Uh, secondary identifiers that help um, address type information, city, state, province, county, zip code, date of birth, year of birth, uh, gender, age. It helps Facebook make better matches. The more of that data that you have and the better you can provide it, the better overall match that you're going to get when you're trying to match this to a specific audience member. Um, and then also very important, if you have transactional data, so if they're a customer list and you have the information for your POS system or what the profitability on that specific client was, include it because there's some really cool tricks that you can use with that that I'll probably cover in another video for you. Um, but you come in and it's going to ask you if it includes column for customer value. This tutorial, we're going to just say no because there's a couple extra steps. And then we need a uh, spreadsheet that's going to contain that data. So I just happen to have a spreadsheet handy and I'm going to just drop it in. So this spreadsheet, nothing really special, just username, full name. Um, we're not going to linger on that too long, um, but you get all your data in one single row and then you're going to try to map it. So it's going to come up with all of your columns and it's going to find ones that it tried to auto match. And then it's going to find others that, um, it says, hey, there's something here, and I don't know what it is. Uh, it gives you the option to select it. Um, in this case, a lot of this data is not going to get uploaded. So we have email. We see the preview. Those are definitely valid email addresses. We have the phone number, and these are valid phone numbers. And then we have this ID field. That's not a phone number. We're just going to say, do not upload that. So to start with, we're going to try to do this match on just these two field pieces of data um, to help out a little bit. But you could also, um, if you had first name and last name separated, I would definitely recommend mapping those. Um, and then you just tell it to import in create. And it's going to go ahead and import all of that data in and then allow you to, um, it's just going to tell you that we chose not to upload some of those. And then I'm actually going to not follow this all the way through. Um, so it tells us there were 688 rows, it imported the whole list, and then we just say done. So I've already uploaded and created an audience from a couple of these. We did some realtors. So we uploaded a realtor audience. Now there's not enough information here for this ad, um, for an ad to be run directly to this custom audience. You need over a thousand members in that audience in order to start running ads to it due to privacy. However, there is enough data generally to be able to create a lookalike audience. Uh, anywhere from, um, from 400 to 500 is generally enough to start creating a lookalike audience. Now, why do you want a lookalike audience? Lookalike audiences are extremely powerful audiences that harvest the power of Facebook's algorithm. They allow you to match prospective clients that know nothing about you, have never experienced your product or service, and uh, clients that already have used your product or service 
and match them up based on data points with the, with the algorithm. So the mo more closely prospective clients look to your existing clients, the better chance that they're going to be receptive to the same things. If they have the same hobbies, they have the same kind of jobs, they have, um, they have similar family situations, they make about the same amount of money every year. Facebook knows more data about us than we probably know about ourselves. Um, so let's harvest the power of that. So then what we'll do is we'll tell it we want to create an audience, but we're going to create a lookalike audience. And then we'll go select that existing audience that we imported. And we'll say, in this case, we're going to make one off of real estate agents. Right? And if we have, um, if we have um, event values, you know, then we can upload with event values. If we don't, we don't. We'll select a region. We know that we want... Uh, I'm only interested in the United States with this particular audience. You may not be. You might be interested in another country or all countries everywhere. A uh, specific state, maybe a specific city. Um, put that in here. Um, and then the number of lookalike audiences. How many audiences do you want? Do you want one audience, three audience, four, five, six? And what it's going to do is it's going to divide up that data. If we say we want two audiences, we're going to have two different sliders to select to determine what we want. In this case, we only want one. But a 1% lookalike audience, it sounds like it's going to give us about 2.4 million people. And that's going to be most similar to the list that we uploaded. The further toward 10% we get, the least sim less similar it is. And you can see that brings us to 24.2 million, which is way too much to run an ad to. So for a single audience, we'd never do that. Um, I wouldn't go any more than 2% um, separation uh, or two percent degree of separation on any specific audience, um, just because any larger of a sample than that, seven point two million, is a very large audience to be running an ad to, especially effectively. Um, you could do two, and we could say, you know, we want one that's four point eight, and then maybe another one that's four point eight, and then we have the top two percent, and then the top um, two two four percent. Um, but we're just going to do one percent, and it'll give you the option to name that, and then what you'll end up with are listings that look like this. So this is the top 1% of 2.3 million people, and the top 2% of 4.6 million people, and then from 2 to 3% for um, 2.3 million people. So those are three separate audiences of people that have never done business with me before that I can now run ads to um, in a little bit more of a targeted fashion in a way that Facebook ad targeting doesn't quite allow me to. So that brings up the question, what if you're just getting started? You don't have any transactional data to work with, but you're still having trouble locating your audience. In that case, I've got a tool just for that. Uh, I would refer you to Instagram to start your search, and we're going to start looking for somewhere real estate agents are bound to be. So the very first place I can think of when I think of real estate agents is Zillow. Um, Zillow is one of the largest real estate websites that there are. Um, but what, what's, what's available for Zillow? Well, I happen to know already that Zillow has a premier agent Instagram. So with a little bit of finding, you could find that. And you'd find out there's 15.2 thousand people that follow. So we click into our followers and we can do some spot checks here. Um, and look to see whether we're hitting a high number of real estate agents. This one, definitely a real estate agent. Probably works for Remax by the looks of it. Um, we could look into... Um, oh, that is not what I wanted to click. We're going to unfollow. Um, Cindy Lee team, that sounds like, yep, real estate agents in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, so, so far we're, we're two for two that we can confirm, um, real part member of the realtor association. So also probably a realtor. So this is a good one to take a look at. So now that we have that, we know premier agent is the Instagram name. I'm just going to copy that because we're going to need that in a moment. We go to a handy little Chrome extension that I have called profile me. We're actually just, we're going to open that up hole for you just so you can see what we go through. Um, there it is. 
I'm a Chrome extension fanatic. Don't judge me. And Profile Mate is going to take a look, and we're going to see we want to look for followers that are following another account. We want followers that are looking at Premier Agent. Boom, there it is. Only followers, and we're going to analyze the followers following. And it's going to go through, and I'm not going to let this run because I've already got this specific set of data, uh, but we can look at only public users. And then we can download a list of the username and uh, full names that are attached to this. Um, we're going we're gonna to back up from here because we don't need that to complete. Once we have that data, we can then ask it to analyze email. And we're just going to grab, oh, well, let's grab a few pieces of information. Uh, let's grab these three. So we have these three that were usernames we're going to paste in from the spreadsheet. We're going to say that we want to name, oops, name that test. Sorry, hitting the microphone. And then we're going to select what options that we're interested in. In this case, we're phone number, email address. We probably want to leave business category and city. Um, if it's a business account or not, matters because we can use this data for more than just Facebook targeting. Don't care about engagement rate or follow-up count. Don't really care if it's private, but I'm not going to hurt if it is. Link in the account website. I might care about that. Maybe we want to sell them a website. So we'll hit next. And now it's going to go through each of those three options, and it's going to see what it can find. And it'll look at all of the public, publicly available data. You could go through these one at a time and see whether there's information contained. And it's showing us homes underscore Sharon Berry and live dot, uh, Floridian both have publicly available um, pieces of information that I was able to discern. So I'm specifically wanting to know, is there an email address? So we're going to say yes, then we'll download that conditional data. You might want to download the full data too, just so you have all of it. You know, data is super important. And then you'll end up with a spreadsheet that looks like this. This is all publicly available information. We're not grabbing anything shady. We're not going to do anything crazy with it. Um, you know, we're not, we're not grabbing their personal address information, nothing that isn't publicly posted. Um, so it tells us the username, the full name, the way it's listed in um, Instagram, which in this case is probably not correct 100%. Um, but if we have email addresses that appear to be valid email addresses, we have phone numbers uh, with a one country code, could tell us uh, Prairie Village, Kansas, and say St. Augustine, Florida, and then a link to the Instagram account if, that it came from if we need to look at anything to verify it. And then it tells us that these are business accounts. So if we wanted to, they're business accounts, so we could absolutely could call, cold call these businesses as well. Um, but I would save this data, and then I would export this and use this data to build my custom audience. Now you might be asking, well, how do I get my hands on ProfileMate? Well, I'm going to leave a link below down in the description for you guys. Profile Mate is something that you're interested in. You can check it out if you'd like it. That's great. If not, that's absolutely okay too. Um, there's a few different ways of going about getting this data. This is by far the easiest that I've found. So I'm going to leave you guys with that to start building your own custom audiences. You guys have an amazing night. Hey, thanks for joining us on another episode with Dawn Internet Marketing. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. And while you're here, you might as well check out some of our other amazing content.